Hey there, hi there, ho there. It is the Corel Cast. Hi, I'm Corel, and happy Friday, July 9th. I'm so very glad you are joining me. I think my mic needs to be a little taller, just a little taller. It's one of those uh, rock star diva moments, you know, where they come out and they adjust the mic stand. That's what I'm doing here. Sorry about that. But I am glad you are joining me. I'm a little melancholy this afternoon, I got to tell you. Uh, you know, there ain't no shame in my game. I tell you everything, I, you know, that how I feel. Uh, and today I'm feeling just a little melancholy because I feel like that teacher at recess that has to ring the bell. Uh, I do. I feel like the teacher at recess that pretty much has to ring the bell. And I'll tell you what that means in just a moment. Uh, but, uh, you know, yesterday I had the pleasure of having lunch with Terry Ray Elmer, uh, former mornings at KBC, uh, also former news person at KFI AM 640 Los Angeles. Uh, where over 20 plus years ago, I started saying KFI is with Turn 24 News. And for that, let's go to Terry Ray Elmer in the KFI newsroom uh, to where I could say it in my sleep. Uh, and, um, you know, she and Andrew really got along very well. And they would talk constantly about sales at Macy's and stuff like that. Girl talk. Uh, and I saw her yesterday physically for the first time in probably 15 years um, uh, out here at Red Rock. Uh, and it was great to catch up. And it, um, how many of you have experienced, how many of you have lived long enough to experience the you can never go back thing? Um, you know, I sometimes think to myself, I wouldn't mind going back to corporate radio, getting a paycheck through SAG-AFTRA, getting off disability, finding a situation that could work. In other words, they would have to work around my disability. Um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't do, be able to do a lot of remotes. I, you know, I would be, but not, you know, not, not like it used to be. But then again, radio isn't like it used to be. Um, and I, you know, I, and then I hear from her about what's happening, you know, behind the scenes at various radio stations. And I think to myself, oh my God, like how much stress you know, was in your life and would be in your life uh, if you went back into that because of the way corporate radio has changed and because of the people that are in it. There's still a lot of, you know, white guys, straight white guys, uh, a few women who some of which behave like straight white guys. Um, so it made me realize that that sort of environment isn't something that I would thrive in. I could do it but it would it would it would create a lot of stress and when you have an enlarging aorta maybe you don't you know need that uh and it really resonated to me about how you can never go home you know radio today is not the radio that that terry ray and i were in in the 90s and early 2000s it no job is and i think what every job has lost and it's why there's so many people that don't want to go back to their jobs in today's new economy i didn't know i'd be talking about this today by the way um i think what every job lost was that sense of family that sense of camaraderie that sense of all for one and one for all and that sense that the job was um was the family in other words, in the KFI days, for instance, for Carell and Andrew, first the weekend host, we loved and adored like the late Jeff Levy and others. Um, you know, we really, we loved them as people. They were great people. And we knew them because we started on the weekends. Tim and Neil. Uh, Neil still works there, Neil Savedra. Um, and then the Monday through Friday people, once we got that big spot in afternoon drive, Suddenly, people like Bill Handel, uh, you know, Dr. Laura, uh, Phil Hendry, who is, uh, we're still friends, Phil and I. Um, I mean, we like speak, you know, we're friends. And of course, David Hall, our ringmaster. And these people were family and had events at each other's houses and, you know, knew everybody's business. And, you know, Anthony Smokovich and on and on. I could go the list of KFI uh, alumni, Terry Ray Elmer, of course, Suzanne Watley, uh, you know, just so many, Chris Little. Um, and corporations came and broke up those families and belittled those families and undervalued and underpaid those families. 
And subsequently, those families fractured. And some still keep the bonds. I still talk, as you can see from yesterday. If you follow my social media, Really Carell, at Instagram and Twitter, Really Carell, K-A-R-E-L. You'll see me and T-Ray and Ember uh, at Red Rock and at the Yard House. Then they had many vegan options, so bravo. Um, you can't go back. And also, you have a romanticized version of the past in your brain. I will tell you that, too. Uh, if you went back and looked at the past for what it truly was, you would realize it was as stressful and horrible that, you know, when you think you're having the time of your life, you really are, because even when you're not, you really are, because that's how life is. Life is stress. And I guess that's a good... I didn't know I was going to be talking about that, about how you can never go back and... And, you know, would you go back? If you could go back to one job, you know, would you? I mean, look, I love radio. I do. But I, I want video more. I want, you know, I want more. And I always have. And if I don't go do it now, it won't happen. But God, if radio came knocking and it was something where I could, you know, see myself going until I retire, that would really help my retirement. So I wouldn't turn it down. Because I love radio. But I love so much more. Sometimes I love doing nothing now. Ain't that something? I realized today that sometimes sitting around with Ember and hanging out with her, a good dog, a good friend, uh, is time well spent. I think a lot of countries have. That's why they're experimenting with three and four day work weeks. And when they do those, productivity goes through the roof. Because this goes back to a family. A family... You know, when work, when you feel that work is more than just work, we weren't just, you know, we were doing radio. There was a bigger cause, all hands on deck. That took engineers and producers and news people. It takes a village to do radio, to do it right. And the product, the end product was this live broadcast, which many people work on. And there's magic in that. You know, there really, truly is magic in that. And corporate, corporations came in and took that magic away and made it all very expendable and replaceable and voice-tracked and everything else. I don't know if you care about that on this Friday, but it, it directly influences what you hear. The corporations that run media... You know, I've had friends in media now been told, like, they're reporters, and they were told to do more positive slants on certain people in politics because the bosses, the overlords, wanted it that way. They left. Uh, they did not compromise. But you see what I'm saying? The owners and how they treat those people that work there directly affects the quality of what you hear and what you see uh, and, and the content that you're able to have. Uh, so yeah, it matters. It does matter. That radio used to be a fun place. Television used to be a fun place. Stressful, backstabbing, hectic, all of that stuff. But also fun. And when it came down to it, you were family. And even the ones you didn't like. You know, Handel and I never really got along. You know, I mean, we weren't like, we didn't like hang out for beers or anything. Bill Handel on KFI. And on KGO, the same thing. You know, Bill Wattenberg hated my guts. He was that horrible family member that you don't want at dinner. You know, the Trump supporting evil, you know, I, he would have supported Trump, I'm sure. Uh, had he lived. Uh, Wattenberg, not Trump. God, there's so many dead now that I worked with at KGO. Gene, they just did some tribute to Gene Burns on KGO on radio, a station I used to work at. And... Them firing him the way that they fired him literally killed him. And anyone that knows him knows that statement to be true. The way that, that this guy, all of them, in one room, this radio station in San Francisco, KGO Radio, when the, another corporation took them over, marched all these hosts into the fishbowl, we used to call it. It was a glass conference hall. Um, hosts that had been on the station 10, 20, 30 years. Ray Taliaferro, Gene Burns. You know, I think Bernie was in jail by then. Uh, I do. I think he was. Maybe he was. I don't know. Anyway, Bernie Ward went to jail um, seven years, which is more than 
some people are going to serve for like killing people. Uh, and he, he had dirty child pornography pictures. Anyway, um, took them into this room. And then the program director walked in and Ray Taliaferro didn't, you know, program director walks in and says, hi, um, you know, you guys are great. However, we're taking the station in a different way in terms of programming. Uh, this is a woman from HR. She will have your packages and thank you so much for all of your service. And this guy walked out of the room. You've worked somewhere 30 years. So Ray Taliaferro turns to Bernie Ward and says, what's going on? What's happening? And he goes, uh, we've been fired. Because Ray Taliaferro, one of the hosts there, didn't even know what was going on. That's how quick it was. And then they hand them their brown envelopes and say, there's the door. Go clear out your stuff. That killed Gene Burns. He died within months or weeks of that. I mean, it, it really did kill him. And so when I heard them playing him reading the Declaration of Independence, it made me want to puke. I thought, why? You, th that station has no right to ever play anything of Gene Burns ever again. I'm digressing to stuff most of you don't even know about. In Norway, you don't know about this. But how many of you in Norway, where I'm, I'm in the top 100 now, how many of you in Norway uh, have worked at a place and that place done something hypocritical towards an employee? They dog the employee and then they act like, oh, this was a great employee. We loved them. We cared about them deeply. You fired them. You threw them out in disgrace. You, you, know, uh, you see what I'm saying? I think you all can relate to that story. I think you've all worked with somebody, worked at a company that was hypocritical. And nowadays, everybody is hypocritical. How many people today rag on people, rag on people, rag on people, and then that person dies, and suddenly that person's a saint? Honey, I'm the one that played Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead the day Reagan died. Ain't no, I don't do that. If you were bad in life, you are bad in death and good riddance. Now, what I did want to talk about today, now that I've been off on some big stoner rant or something, I don't know, whatever. I hope you like it in Norway. <laughs> it just tickles me. I'm in the top 100 of Norway. Uh, anyway, um, what I did want to talk about is I have to be the, uh, the teacher that rings the recess bell. I know they're automated now, but they didn't used to be. Uh, and what they were, a human was the automation. Uh, and it's, it's made me melancholy because I know what's coming and I'll get a doctor on here like next week and they'll tell you what's coming. But COVID is not only not going anywhere, but it's going to come back strong. Now, America has always been behind the rest of the world. Japan just declared a state of emergency over COVID and the Delta variant. And they're not having anybody at the Olympics. No spectators. Big change of plans there. Melbourne, uh, Sydney, going back on lockdown because of the Delta variant. Uh, on and on. Now, in America and the EU, they, Ireland is still on some form of lockdown and they extended it 30 days because of the Delta variant. And now there's the Lambda variant, which we have here in Vegas. Now, I've seen what, what happened with COVID, what happened with AIDS. I've seen this. And now that this is a monetary thing where mask wearing is political and uh, shutting down things is tied to the economy and your job and your livelihood and because there's no safety net the government won't provide. Um, I know what's, what lies ahead. And because we are not mandatorily making you take a vaccine, which I would be for, I know that sounds odd, but, and when I say mandatorily, I simply mean it should be where you have to show proof of vaccination to get in any public place. And if you're not vaccinated, there should be someone right there vaccinating you. And then they send you home and say, come back in, you know, three weeks and vaccinate you again, and then you can go in wherever. You know what? I said the same thing with AIDS when they said, should they close down the bathhouses and all the gays? I wrote editorials back then that would not be run in newspapers. It's why my book is called You Can't Say That, my first book out of print, uh, because I said, of course, you should close the bathhouses. 
You should absolutely close the bathhouses. It's a sexually transmitted disease and we don't know what's going to happen with it. And yes, close the bathhouses. I was in the minority. And I am telling you now, uh, with COVID-19, if we have a way to stop the transmission and we don't do it, and that way is to make it so at least 80% of us are vaccinated. If you, let me tell you this. If you're on any kind of public aid, you should have to provide proof of vaccination. If you get welfare, food stamps, social security, disability, if you get anything from the federal government at all in terms of aid, you should have to prove that you're vaccinated. Otherwise, you are a health menace. You are a liability. You are a threat. Unvaccinated people are a threat to national security. And that's the truth. We had a president. Well, he didn't have COVID. But you know what I'm saying. You know, it, it could go anywhere. They are a threat to that. And it's going to get worse. And so we've had a great time, haven't we? We've all started to go back out. We've all started to go to restaurants. We've all gone to grocery stores. And we've even taken off our masks some places. I mean, look, the CDC said today that teachers and students who are fully vaccinated don't need to wear a mask in schools. California said, wait a minute. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, so California is countermanding the CDC on that. Uh, and the CDC is wrong. They're wrong. I'm telling you right now, this is all being done in the name of normalcy to get back to, quote, normal, which wasn't good, by the way. Normal wasn't good. And to do that, they'll sacrifice you and I. To get business back to normal, they will sacrifice us. So I need you to mask up again anytime you are in an enclosed public place. Grocery store, Walmart, Target, you know, Macy's, whatever. Mask up, first of all. It, I, and yes, of course, get vaccinated. That's just not even, that's non-negotiable. Don't be my friend if you're not getting vaccinated, please. I'm serious. Because I, I just can't be friends with someone that stupid. Um, so get vaccinated. And then after you get vaccinated, be sure you are masking up. Uh, be sure you are washing your hands still. Be sure that you are not putting yourself at risk. Another, you know what that would be. You've been around the last 18 months. And yeah, go back to the grocery delivery service maybe. And yeah, uh, maybe eat at home more than eating out still. Yeah. Now look, I, I'm going to eat out maybe once a week still. I did during the pandemic. I ate outside. You know, other, but I didn't stop going to restaurants entirely. So I'm going to continue to do that. But I need you to be safe. Because it's, it's coming back. And baby, ain't no stopping it now. No, it's on the move. It has found an unvaccinated population in every maggot and Trump supporter out there. 99.7% of all hospitalizations right now are unvaccinated. And they got vaccination remorse, honey. A lot of them are saying, I would have gotten it if I had known. I would have got Yeah, you should have known. Carell, you're not, you're not being compassionate. No, I'm not. I'm not. Science, medicine, everyone has told them you got to take the vaccine. Look, I took it not knowing whether it's safe or not. Now, you know, I have heart issues including, you know, an, an enlarging aorta. And they say a side effect can be inflammation of the heart. You know, I'm concerned, but I would have been more concerned if I didn't get the vaccine. And might it kill us all? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe the vaccine is an evil plot to kill us all. Well, then we all die. I won't be alone. So, you know. Whatever your conspiracy theory is there, it's ridiculous. Take the vaccine. But I need you to go back to acting like COVID's a thing. I know they don't want you to. I know they want you to act like COVID ain't nothing, honey. COVID, oh, we beat that. Oh, that pandemic, no, we gone. Yeah, AIDS is 40. Influenza is hundreds of years old. You know, there's a lot of viruses that we still got and we haven't gotten rid of. So don't act like COVID's gone. 
because there's the new and improved COVID, the Delta variant and Lambda. Lambda sounds gay, like the gay COVID. Because Lambda legal is a gay... De Lambda has been used in reference to gays before. And now there's the Lambda variant. The gay Maybe there is gay COVID. Oh, what would the symptoms of gay COVID be? <laughs> I've got the gay COVID. <laughs> I can't stop watching RuPaul's Drag Race. No, no, no. Most, any, I, I don't know one gay that watches RuPaul's Drag Race. Mostly straight people. Um, what, who, how, well, who, what, what? I don't know what gay COVID symptoms would be. I really don't. I don't want to make fun of it and make light of it. And Oh, Corel, you're insensitive. What if a gay person gets the real COVID? Your friend Gary Bowie was gay and he died of COVID. Yes. And he had a sense of humor. I'm just saying that Lambda used to be used in the gay communities. So every time I hear the word the Lambda variant, I think there's a gay variant of COVID. Uh, you know, I, what would it, it's only attracted to other, I don't know. I don't know what gay COVID would be, but it sounds like there is one. I guess I should be a better comedian and figure out what, what I think gay COVID would be. But you can't make gay COVID. We can't make gay jokes and you can't make COVID jokes. Like you can't make a gay COVID joke. There are so many things you can't do. <laughs> In today's world, when it comes to like trying to make fun of things or make light of something so you're not so down in the dumps about it, there's a lot that you used to be able to do. You know, I'm watching Cold Case because I don't have a life. And uh, it's on HBO Max now. I used to watch it on TV, but it, I never saw them like all of them. Um, I like that there's all this. It's music based. Uh, so I'm watching it. And I find they excuse a whole lot of bad behavior from the past to it was the times. Well, it was the times. So is that what they're going to say about wh when they look back and say, why didn't they all wear masks? Why didn't they all get the vaccine? Why didn't the government make them? Why didn't they, you know, they had a chance to stop this. Why, why didn't they stop this? Well, you have to understand, it was a different time. Is that what they're going to say about 2021 one day? If, should there be humans to live long enough to read a history of our time? If the planet hasn't devoured us, burned us, eaten us up, spit us out? As uh, it is what? 114 degrees in Las Vegas at what time? 720 at night, 1920? It's 114 at 1920, at 720. Can you imagine? And tomorrow and the next day is going to be hotter. It's going to be 117, maybe 120. And not just here, the rest of the West Coast is bubbling up again, child. Are they going to look back at us about that and say, you mean they had a chance to stop that? And they, You mean they had a chance? Oh, that, the, see, I found today's catch. You mean they had a chance? You mean they could have stopped this? They could have ended this? That's what the future sounds like. The future sounds like a judgmental queer. That's what the future. <laughs> you, <laughs> you mean they could have stopped this? They could have ended it. But because some, some talk show host that was orange and lived in Florida told them not to wear a mask, they literally wouldn't put on a mask. Because some senator that they never met, some, some guy that sold them out and went off to Cancun while they're freezing in the cold because he said not to do it. So they had a doctor on the TV telling a doctor, a real doctor, telling them on the TV, no, do this, do this, and they didn't do it because a politician, not a doctor, told them to? Yeah, the future's going to sound like that, honey. The future's going to be like, wait a minute. You mean they saw the destruction of the West Coast coming? They had these heat domes. They had all these deaths. They had all this melting. They, they knew that this was going to be the new norm, and they didn't start to relocate. You mean they had a chance? You know, on CBSN today, I saw an author. I wrote down his name. I'll get him on the show, actually. Um, he wrote about Chicago and how Chicago is really built on the marshland that was in between the river and the lake. And they created the biggest plumbing project, you know, in history by reversing the river and sending it all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but it's still a swampland. And one of the ways that they protect themselves is 
they can often open the river if the river gets too high and dump it into the lake because they reversed the river. But now the lake is getting so high that they can't open those gates because if they do, the lake will actually flow into the river, which they don't want. So they're not, in the past, Chicago literally boosted the city up eight feet. Literally, it did that. The whole city. They even hoisted buildings up eight feet. And now they're not sure what they're going to do because the land that they're built on, because of global warming, uh, the lake might just take it back as in take back Chicago, as in flood it all, the swamp that it is. So <laughs> it, we have all of this and the future would be like, you mean they could have stopped this? You always see on TV, people get all bent out of shape. You mean you could have stopped this? I was possessed by Flip Wilson just then, Geraldine. Uh, but we're the ones. We're the ones that they're screaming that to. You mean you could have stopped COVID and you didn't? So here's how we stop it. You got to go back to acting like it's real. I know it sounds horrible to say you got to start retreating back into your house again. Maybe work remotely again. Maybe, you know, you, you got to act like there's another huge wave coming because there's another huge wave coming. And Vegas ain't going to close. And business ain't going to close, so you got to protect you. Get vaccinated, stay masked, and try to avoid really large crowds in, in enclosed areas. No concerts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not now. Well, I'm vaccinated. If, what if I wear a mask to a concert? You could still get COVID. You may not end up in the hospital, but do you really want to get... I mean, come on. We don't know how, how many times... This thing, this thing is mutating more than the Kardashians have surgery. I mean, this... The, you know... So, okay. Well, happy Friday. I just want you to be safe. Just, just please this weekend start getting back in the mindset that recess is over, COVID's back, it's making a comeback, and you've got to start making sure that you're staying in the lines, I guess. You know, color back inside the lines right now. It is not time to be going Yahoo crazy free. It's because COVID's going, yeah. And because we don't know who's vaccinated anymore. And the anti-maskers are not wearing masks and they're probably not vaccinated. And I, you know, do you really want to subject yourself to that? I mean, really, especially if you're over 50. They did a study in Italy. People over 50 that are fully vaccinated are getting the Delta variant. The same in, Italy, uh, in uh, Israel, same study. People over 50, fully vaccinated, getting the Delta variant. So I'm, I hate to ring the recess bell. All right, I am Corel. Be who you want to be, so I don't hurt anybody. Remember to follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. It is really Corel. Uh, Facebook, I think it's Corel, Corel Media Official. That's it, yeah. Corel Media Official. Facebook.com forward slash Corel Media Official. And I barely use Facebook. I mean, I post to it every day, but I, you know, uh, I only do that because uh, you have to when you're, I hate Facebook. I hate Zuckerberg. Uh, anyway, uh, he owns Instagram too, but what can I do? Uh, again, I'm in, a, I'm in a public kind of job where social media is now how you connect to fans and things. So Really Carell uh, is the Instagram. Really Carell is the Twitter. ReallyCorell.com is the website. Uh, of course, there's a Carellcast app at the App Store. Uh, and for those of you that support me on Patreon right here down below, uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Carell. I can't thank you enough. All right. Stay safe. Become safer. Become more aware that COVID is not going anywhere for a while because of these morons that refuse to get vaccinated. And we're not forcing them to. We're not, you know, we're not making them. And because of that, because we are not making them, uh, we are probably going to see a big splurge of COVID. So protect you and your family. Okay. See you on Monday. Bye. Much love. Mwah. Mwah. Kisses. Kisses, kisses. Oh, well.